Sweden's ban on religious schools accused of targeting Muslims. Sweden's government has been criticized for enacting a a policy that would seek to halt the establishment of denominational schools in the country coming under fire for allegedly selectively targeting Muslim schools. Quote, it is time to ban independent religious schools. The school should not be the place for religious schooling and encourage religious segregation. Neither Christian sects, imams, nor shareholders should govern the school, said Lisa Nabo, the Social Democrats Youth Union chairman. I don't know how to pronounce anything Swedish, just warning. <laughs> um, Anandulu agency reported that around 20 schools in the country with an Islamic orientation were closed down since 2019, with only three remaining, two of which have filed a lawsuit against the Swedish government. The Islamic Schools Association has also claimed that the policy was motivated mainly by politics and hate against Muslims. Although Muslims criticized the policy, critis, excuse me, Christians also previously expressed their concerns regarding the bill. Frederick uh, Sin, Sindenval, a Swedish priest and vice chairman of the Christian Independent Schools Council, described the tone of the proposal as approaching, quote, incitement against ethnic groups and institutionalized bullying. Um, so... Let's give some background. So in the background, in 2019, the government enacted a policy, and this is actually pushed forward by most, uh, very strongly by the Social Democrat Party. And um, it basically is about shutting down religious schools. So you're not allowed to create new religious schools and it puts further restrictions on the ones that already exist. And this has been, you know, enacted for, you know, almost three years now. And um, of the schools that have been shut down under this policy, I believe 19 of them were Muslim. And that is a huge portion of the country's um, Islamic schools for children. And a lot of people are questioning the ways in which this goes about. Like, how did this happen and why these schools are being shut down in particular? And so they're saying oh you know you're purporting supposedly this is supposed to be about religious education in general but we think you're just targeting us or we don't believe your reason for shutting down our school is valid now part of what makes this story a little bit difficult to cover is that most of the sources that i have found about this have been from basically religiously oriented news sites so i found them from um like middle east eye is one and then another from um a news website that's called the daily saba so like jewish oriented and so they all have a religious angle on the way in that they're covering the story and it's very biased in their reporting and so it's when I've been re looking into this, it's a bit difficult for me to actually determine how much bias is actually occurring. Now, the Swedish government has come forth and completely rejected, like, the claim that they are being, like, bigoted and biased in the schools that they choose to shut down. They're like, we're shutting this down because of financial irregularity or um, because you're not providing the standard of education that we mandate, da, da, da. But one source that I found, um, the Middle East Eye, they said that, um, like, one school, for, okay, here's a quote from the article. Quote, for example, in July 2021, authorities closed down Al-Azhar Al School in Orebro, bro, Ore bro, arguing that a board member who had returned from a trip to Syria could be an Islamic State sympathizer and could radicalize the students, even though he had no criminal records. They also shut down like a, a, a preschool because they said that they were going to like radicalize the children and stuff, according to this article. So I don't know. All this to say is like there's something going on here. I'm not 100 percent sure of how bad it actually is. Based on everything I've just told to you, Armin, what is your reaction? Yeah, I think you're, it's very reasonable to not be sure um, about because i want to celebrate this like i like celebrating closing down islamic schools and christian schools in favor of getting these kids to engage with the rest of the society 
um, you know, I want Muslim kids and Christian kids and atheists. I mean, technically, there's no such thing, but kids from Muslim parents and kids from Christian parents and kids from atheist parents to learn in school side by side. So, um, and not, you know, be educated in an environment where they're also being brainwashed with dogma. Okay. So I wish, I, I, I really like to be able to celebrate this. Okay. But we have to be suspicious about the intentions here, like because Sweden has gone far right, if I remember correctly, right? I mean, so, I'm, I just hear a lot about how people are like, oh, Swedish people think that, or outside people think that Swedish people are all just like, or hurt, or hurt, like, <laughs> like nice and friendly, but there's actually a lot of xenophobia that goes on. Yeah. Based and on also, the government recently home. just has gone radically far right like their politics is also going for like their recent elections and stuff so um so i don't know what the intentions are here if this was you know happening somewhere else i would be it would be easier to celebrate again we should the intentions matter like we can't just only look at the what is being done we have to also look at what intentions if there was like i would be more inclined to celebrate this if there was also more christian schools being closed I it sometimes like, um, you know, something that is being portrayed as something with good intentions, something that we support, right? Um, is if it's done being done for the bad for bad reasons, like sometimes, like, oh yeah, get religion out of school, but the actual intention is to make life difficult for Muslims in Sweden. Yeah, if that's the intention, then like I don't support it at all, right? Yeah. Like I want I want these schools to be closed while also making Sweden um, feel more, I mean, I know it's hard to do that, but I would li like to see a way to make Muslim um, Muslims in Sweden feel like this is their country. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like not, yeah. the, not like the government is targeting them, right? Mm -hmm. um, Maybe people there's in this article that i was reading was saying that like when they're able to they're going to take their children to a different country to receive an islamic education yeah yeah which is like so, that, that's so a, see uh -oh. people don't understand what I, I think people don't understand what i'm saying okay people saying unfortunately i agree with sweden's position i think you're being very simplistic here okay i would like to see less islamic schools okay but there are right ways of making that happen and there are wrong ways of making that happen, okay? So we don't know exactly what the intentions behind this is and you hands also don't have the details. You could, people like secularists like us sometimes are fooled by seeing something that is anti-religious and think like, okay, this is progress, but the actual thing that is happening is not anti-religion is anti-religious people okay with the intention of making this country less welcome less of a uh, good place you know less of a welcoming place to live for muslims that is the wrong way to go about it right and again i don't know maybe this is actually a good policy but but we don't know so we have to be suspicious you cannot just um support a policy without actually knowing all the details and so like one and of you don't need to and you don't need to know the details all, when you don't know the details all you have to do is like okay i'm suspicious i don't know like like what susie did she's like I, we don't know right that's easy to say yeah, yeah and one thing that like one example of a part of the legislation as i understand it okay asterisk is that for example the it's against the legislation or regulations to have gender segregated schools and so like one of the schools that was closed was closed because they were accused of holding gender segregated classes for the better part of 22 years, even though that's outlawed, yeah. even for religious purposes. That's fair. That's fair. That's like, it's fair to close that. Yeah. Awesome. If it was a single sex school, that's different in my mind because it's like designed for single sex versus having a co-ed school, but then everything segregated. That's I don't think that that's right. But um, I want to clarify something. D, our lovely, beloved editor, is saying, I try to eliminate biased reporting. I have eliminated whole paragraphs I thought were opinion. I hope I'm doing okay. D, you are doing amazing. Okay, girl, you are doing fantastic. Okay, 
my love, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. When I was talking about bias and not knowing what to make of things, I was just referring to when I'm doing my own research in addition to what we put on our site. Um, because like I said, all, most of the sourcing that I could find was from religiously oriented news sources. So um, it's hard to get like an objective opinion from them. You know what I mean? But everyone say thank you to Dee in the chat because Dee is the best. She works hard for us and it means a lot to me. Um, <laughs> um it's um, um here's okay. a here's an let me give you um an example of something um it's possible to have a good law right that you're like well this is a good law i'm glad they're enforcing it right but you could also misuse a good law because you could enforce it selectively right for example yes. let's say for example um, let me make you make it an uh, um um a, a, just a very simple example let's say you have country a okay and you criminalize murder right and in this country a you have people b kind of people and c kind of people i'm just giving you a very very simple example okay and you have b kind of people and c kind of people and c people you arrest them for this law okay but you don't arrest b people for the same law and I, every time I complain and they, uh, that a C person has been arrested for this law, you're like, well, it's a good law. It's anti-murder. And they're being arrested for murder. So that's good. Isn't that good? I'm like, yeah, that is good. But I think this law is being used selectively to just go against C people. I, you know what I mean? Like, I know it's very simple, but I'm just saying, like, even good laws could be misleading because the execution method is important as well. It's not just the... It's not just a lot that matters. Oh, we got we got a super chat. Yeah, so a lot of people were saying thank you to D in the live chat, which I love. It warms my heart. And then Atheist Damon gave us three, uh, almost four dollars on well, three forty three and a half, okay. <laughs> three and a half New Zealand dollars or whatever dollars. you call it, Kiwis. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and she said thanks, D. Mm. We love it. We love the appreciation for our lovely lovely Lee d um so armin are you ready to go to the next news because it is yes. wait this is funny <laughs> <laughs> something i don't remember saying every law can be used that in that way you're just being sweetophobic <laughs> <laughs> okay you okay. got me there <laughs> oh we got another super chat thank you so much from Rakshith, thank you, Rakshith, for the 100 rupees, saying all theistic belief systems collapse the moment death myths, afterlife, reincarnation, and immortality after death is debunked, let alone the creator. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for the 100 rupees super chat. I yeah, concur, that's... Rakshith. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the super chat. Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.